Hello, this lesson is designed to help you get around smart music and to uh, try and get you started to see what it can do and how you can use it in your practice. So right here, this is where I pulled up a song. I went to Essential Elements book two, and this is number 62, rock.com. Uh, if you click this arrow here, you can choose from any of the songs in the book. Uh, for right now, I'm using the trumpet part, but you can change through the instruments. Now, it will most likely go to your primary instrument, and you might be locked into it at first, but um, once you get to some other songs, you'll be able to switch it. But for your practicing, you really don't need to switch it. Up here, there are some important things. So when you are playing the music, over here at the accompaniment, this is the background music so that if you're using headphones or if you're playing it through the speaker on your computers or however you're hearing it, uh, this is where you can pull the volume of the background music down so you can hear yourself better. Or you could simply click this and mute it so you don't hear the background music at all. My part, so that's the, mute, that's the volume level for your notes. And so it might be useful to turn this off and just listen to your part by itself. And you can adjust that volume however you'd like. You could also go back and mute your part and have the accompaniment on. And that way you could go back and you could practice playing your part of the music along with the accompaniment but not hearing your own part. So when you're first learning, it would be good to have the, your part on and then muting uh, the accompaniment. Uh, the metronome over here, this is your metronome volume. I would suggest to keep that on almost all the time. Now the subdivisions, uh, that will give you eighth notes clicking um, when you're playing through the music. It depends on how fast you are playing the music and how fast you're practicing and what you're doing. Now, you can click on anywhere in the music and hit play, and it'll start. And of course, this is the count off. I'll do it, let's say, here, this measure. And so if I click one, two, three, four, and then it'll start playing your music. Another thing that I think is great, to, oh yeah, the metronome over here, so, I'm sorry, the tempo over here. So this is where you should pull the tempo down until it's very comfortable for you. And again, I showed you how you could play any part of it and click to wherever it is and say, okay, I want to hear what that sounds like, just my part and the metronome at a slower tempo. All right, and I'll turn this back on. Now this air, this circle arrow will just get you back to whatever the st starting tempo was. Another thing is, if you have a difficult part of the music, let's do right there. Up here it says loop. This, I will set the loop for here to here. So I will say those three measures are hard for me. I'm going to slow down the tempo and I'm going to put it in a loop. So that means it will play through here. It'll start playing. It'll count you off. I'm listening to my part playing as well. Is as soon as it reaches the end here, it'll stop, count off again, and then play it again. I can also change the tempo if I really need to work on it. Um, I will slow this down. So I will stop. Another thing right here is going to be the recording yourself or using the assessment. And so that will help you. It'll grade what you're playing as it's listening.